The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up eight. NASDAQ down 21. S&P's off five and a half. Gold contract up four dollars, trading at 14.01. You get silver down 16 cents, 15 dollars 33 cents. Uh, gold and silver, folks, caught the bid yesterday. Gold goes through a uh, 14.15 overnight. Bottom line, you get your uh, ABC price projection, and we got it in a couple days in spades. Quite a run. Notes and oh, oil. Oil. Uh, must be, I wonder if that's that's a. I think you had the wrong contract. Yeah, we'll, maybe we'll get there. we'll get back to oil. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year note down fifteen ticks, one twenty-seven eighteen. The thirty-year bond off twenty-six at one fifty-four twenty-nine. We go. Let's go take a look at that. I believe these are backing down with light volume after going topside with volume once again. So we take a look at this. Yeah, you get eight. That's exactly what's happening. We get eight hundred seventy-five thousand contracts. I think we went. Up yesterday with about two million, yeah, two point two million. So they're coming into two million. We'll see whether we're going to do two million. That's a lot right now. But the bottom line is that uh, Friday in the summer, guess what? Eleven thirty, folks. Uh, <laughs> things just uh, going to slow Several down. Head to the Hamptons and Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard. There's, there's no doubt. Maybe some. Yeah. There's no doubt. King dollar, King dollar uh, down eighty three ticks, ninety six. The euro is at 113. The yen is at 107.62. And the pound's at 126. Now, if we get over and look at this dollar also, I believe this is going to be the first time in since last October that the dollar three days in a row is actually going to go lower and we're going to have volume. We get 13,000 contracts right now. Um, so we'll see how this shakes out also at 1130. You know what I mean? That can dry up dramatically. Sure. Um, because what we've had since all the way in last October is bottom line is that you go higher, volume would die on the ground. Vine. You go lower, and we'd only get like one day of volume. We got two twice. We haven't got three since last October. Okay. You know, so bottom line, we'll see how this shakes out today. Um, Friday in the summer, you know, but... Guess what? Let's look at that gold contract. This is this is a move, folks. So watch this. If we bring this up, what you're going to see, it looks to me well. We finished the ABC structure up. So when you do that, this has to. This should build cause now. That's what you want to see. If you're a bull, you want to see it build cause. You don't want to see this go up another hundred dollars right now because then that the extension would be just too much. Sure. So if we bring this back, what you are going to see is that we are right at the cusp of a major breakout. This goes back to, uh, that's 2013, right? Look at that. Yes. That's... Six years, basically. And when you get... So the buy that we have here, folks, if you watch a Tiger TV, this is the... one of the ultimate buys that you'd like to look at, meaning that it's a wide-ranging bar. This... Look at that. that this bar is actually $100 long. Yeah. 1307 to 1406. It's been on a quite continuous a month. It's been right. quite a month, right? And, you know, our man, Mr. Larry Pesavento, who has an outstanding show every trading day here, I mean, you talk to him about wide-ranging bars, man. I mean, he taught me so much about wide-ranging bars. <laughs> you get a wide-ranging bar on the way up, you better not be going short. You get a wide-ranging bar on the way down, uh, you better not be long, man. Sure, Because yeah. they normally, folks, don't come in ones. That's how these things shake out, man, you know, so. So we'll get some action. Um, we sure it, do. You know, the... Uh, Let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities. We had that Slack IPO yesterday. Yeah, quite a number, right? Up like 50% at least. It that. is. Well, there yeah. it is right there, yeah. right at the top, right? Yeah. Go for Thir it. $37. And so this, the way this works, folks, is that this is a direct listing. listing. Yeah. And the company doesn't get any money, but the, what ends up happening is shareholders can sell their shares now. Sure. That's how, that's how this works. Yeah. Um, they thought that the thing... Well, they, they put a price point on it. Not a price point because there's no such thing as a price point. It's like a reference price, they yeah, call it. Yeah, 26 bucks. Right. And you get 38 right now. Not bad. You know, so Not bad. 
This, this, oh, that's that's some real action. It sure is. We take a look at the um, higher volume equities, and I, we'll see whether we get any volume out here today. You got, uh, let's see. So you got Bank of America up 17 cents. You got Microsoft uh, up 28. You got Intel up 22. You got uh, Micron. Is that yeah? Down 77. Down, yeah. Inside the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness. And you know what? That's right. We had an option expiration today. Today's yes, the third sure. Friday. Huh? Yeah, sure yeah. Do. Okay, so there'll be some action into the close. Yeah. That's okay. So Goldman's putting 11 positive points. Chevron nine. You get Walmart putting six. Um, American Express is putting. Oh, not yeah. American Express is putting six. Yeah. Hey, what do you see this? This is this is this is why people, folks, go absolutely bonkers about how companies get away with everything. So, Walmart, watch this. <laughs> this was this is this company put out put so many people out of business, folks. It's unbelievable. So, what this story is about about seven years ago. I remember this so well because uh, anyway, what the story is about is that Walmart pays 282 million to end the long-running bribe probe. Okay, so this bribe probe has to do with Brazil as well as Mexico. And they were bribing the officials to get their stores open quickly and to change zoning. Okay. Okay. So what they did yesterday is this. They got rid of the criminal complaint by the, by the uh, your Justice Department for $282 million. Then they got rid of uh, the SEC by paying um, 138 plus 144 million to the SEC. So they got rid of everything yesterday, yeah. right? Now watch, <laughs> I've got this number up, right? But if you want to see how this is like pocket change, so it's it's approximately, uh, I don't know, 650 million or something. Okay. okay? Yeah. 650 million, right? And that got them to open so many stores so quick, it was unbelievable. Sure. Well, they take in 526 billion. Yeah. So it's not even a day's gross. Yeah. It's like just over 1% of their revenue, right? <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. Oh, I, I hear you. Yeah. It's, it's pretty intense, man. Yeah. I mean, it's... No, it, even one-tenth of one percent. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, one percent would be like five billion, because they're taking 500 billion. Right. So, like, 500 million would right. be one-tenth of one percent. When, when I revenue. was looking at the number, I'm figuring it's like Walmart... So think of that, it's like one one-thousand, just to put it, so it's really... Yeah, it's like, close, well, yeah. it's like Walmart being open six hours. Exactly. Right. Yeah, It's not six even hours. close to one day, it's right. a third of a day. It's like, yeah. you know, are you kidding me, man? No, I agree. Anyway, yeah. it's... They you know? did say it was interesting. That Walmart Brazilian unit, though, if you pulled it up, is owned by 80% of it's owned by like a venture capital or something. The okay. Walmart in Brazil. As okay. in, they're right. not even the biggest player in that unit, it looks like. Right. Okay. As in, wow. yeah, they, they're just like a 20% partner of Walmart Brazil, which is interesting. Let's, uh, okay, so, oh, let's go to Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Okay, so, 10,000 looks did like we, it's the Did we agenda. hit it or were we at uh, high 99.22? I wasn't it, sure if, yeah. yeah, quite a run, man. That's, and so that, look at this. Four months ago, look at that, 3,300. 200% winner. Wow. Yeah. And now if we bring this up longer, it doesn't even look like you had a retracement. <laughs> yeah, you, you, whoa, no, you had a retracement. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this. Just because the next one might be right around the, the corner, uh, man. So, you know, you, you, this this one's looking just as parabolic as the first one started to look in terms oh, yeah. of that run from 3,000 to 10. 11,671. Hey, it's going to be a good weekend. There's going to the... be a pullback. Where is it going to be, though? Yeah, right. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be a good weekend for the Bitcoin it folks. It does. Dow. Dow Industrials are right now up three. Nasdaq's down 20. S&Ps are up five. Stay right there, folks. Come on. Right. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials up three, Nasdaq down 23, S&Ps off six. And uh, I heard that update, uh, this, uh, you know. It, Quite an explosion at this Philadelphia refinery. Yeah. And is it actually right in the city? I, you know, I, if they say Philadelphia, Philadelphia is like Boston. It's going to have its suburbs. So I don't, okay. I don't know what that might encompass. Yeah. You know, they might say Boston if it might be in uh, Hyde Park or right. in Boston for those familiar with the areas, et cetera. Um, let's see if this place, this is the video. We're watching it. Let's see if I re rewind it, if they're going to make us watch an ad. Nope, here we go. So check out. Um, so pretty apocalyptic to this. be, Boom. I mean, pretty, pretty unreal. They report no injuries. Hopefully that's the case because it uh, it looks like something. Near Philadelphia. Okay. Okay, yeah. there so you go. So it's going to be on the other side. Yeah, right. Um, I wonder who was, nonetheless, right next to a highway. Not yeah. like it's in the boonies, right? Um, not like it's out there. I see Look at that. I mean, pretty, pretty. They said you could see it from space. I would it's believe so it. Um, so pretty remarkable, and thankfully nobody looks to be injured. But yeah, I mean, you see, so you have gas futures, as you'd expect when you have a refinery like that. The most in three months in terms of a spike, the largest on the U.S. East Coast in terms of the refinery, and a key supplier to the New York gasoline market. Um, obviously, fire threatens to increase the fuel prices from Delaware to Maine just as summer begins, which is normally a time of peak driving demand as Americans hit the road. Of course, coming up to July 4th, not that long away, a couple weeks. Um, because what you have here, this is like not a one-time deal. I mean, the refinery's gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, I, <laughs> so I it's like, okay, it would be different, well, folks, if the refinery's down for a day or two, yes. but now it's gone. So it looks like it started after a leak and an alkylation unit triggered explosions, shutting down the Gerard Point section of the refinery. Um, the fire's been contained. <laughs> we contained it, right? I mean, what's to contain? The, the, it's the, all obliterated, the, right? Okay, so they, they, they can process 335,000 barrels of crude a day. Wow, well, yeah. And it's the main supplier of fuel to the New York Harbor market, where inventories of gas are currently just below average seasonal levels. So they're going to get even more below. That's now for it sure. says fuel via pipeline and barge to New York and New England, as well as pipelines to upstate New York. That's a, that, that, yeah, that's yeah, that's a significant loss of gas production. Um, Certainly going to be a price increase from an initial shortfall. And because it's chemical fire, it could burn as long as all day. 
I imagine. You know, you get those chemicals. And it, what's going to be intriguing here, folks, is that it's really hard building new refineries. So it'll be interesting to see how this is going to shake out. Do you know yeah, what I mean? So they say the shortfall will be made up with inventory draws from the local region in the near term and imports longer term, according to Lipau. Um, he's a gentleman in the industry. Supplies on Colonial destined for other markets could, by, could be diverted into Pennsylvania. Yeah, I imagine that there's going to have to be some diversions. Well, it takes about 11 days for a tanker to reach the East Coast from Northwest Europe. So at least that's, you know, you're dealing with two weeks of lag almost, right? To, right. to correct where all these shipments are going that were probably coming out of there. Let me see, do I still have the chart up there? Is that, is that the, yeah, so there's your gas chart. Um, and you traded from about 177 up to 186, man, and we're sitting at 184. 35. I mean, not even as drastic as it might have, you could have expected on something right. like that when you look at where we just were and where we are right now, and you have one of the, not one of the biggest refinery on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, that's out of commission indefinitely. And yeah, exactly. Thankfully, no one's injured. I wonder how that, I, maybe that leak happened and they knew it was a very bad leak. That's it. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you've seen Chernobyl. Uh, I think I mentioned it was on HBO series. Yeah. Uh, Looks akin to like what happened there practically. Yeah. You know, in terms of they see there's, there's problems if you're running that. Oh, plant. Yeah. You, you probably are aware of something going wrong. Um, All the alarms going off. Okay, we yeah. got to get out and we got to get out quick. Yeah. 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 877 927 6648. Take a look at the, uh, let's go over and take a look at Amazon. I know there's a story about Amazon today, and I'm trying to figure is it. Let's see, what are they saying here? Amazon has expended plenty of effort to become a go-to place to buy clothes that clearly make an inroads, and particularly to, appears to be scoring in the category of basics such as undershirts and socks, but the site still isn't a great shopping experience. Well, that will change. For more fashion-oriented purchases. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, it would make sense. That's why companies like, and Gap's not a great example because they're struggling too, yeah. but um, they have a brand. Yeah. Well, you know, to right. build up the a fashion brand, Ralph Lauren, Tommy right. Hilfiger. Right. That's a real tough competition. You want to sell white T-shirts? Okay, I'll buy a white T-shirt, right? I don't need a brand white T-shirt. Maybe some people do, but that's a tough market to crack into. And There they, were a few stories about them, too. I was reading something about CVS in terms of them going after on, C, on CNBC. Uh, there we go. Uh, well, no, maybe CVS. Let's see. They're probably, it's interesting there. Let's see what this one says, because they were talking about the primary, um, all right, I don't want get, to get through it while we're on the air, but it had to do with those pri um, pharmacy benefit managers yep. and how CVS right now is going after an executive that left CVS to go work for Amazon, and their main point is that, listen, Amazon has the delivery and the reach to basically deal directly with insurers, cut out the primary benefit managers, right. which CVS takes in. 100 plus billion dollars a year, 60% of their revenue from that part of their business. It's the middleman. Staggering. Right. It right. almost seems like a. Uh, right. And that's what they're going after. <laughs> that's what this is saying at the last thing. That's that they think within five years they're going to have it together to cut the, li the middle out. Yeah. Well, they, you know, it's, there's so much money there. And that's why we're getting charged so much money for drugs in, ge in general. Sure. You know I mean, it's, the spread is huge. You know. Yeah, well, they, and they, so there is. This is another article right there. So CVS drug distributor slip as Amazon aims to bypass the primary um, pharmacy benefit managers. Right. Uh, so this is the article that, yeah, so we'll pull up those stocks. They must be down. I was reading the article. Um, Amazon appears to be looking at ways to bypass pharmacy managers and contract directly with employers and health plans, according to one analyst. That's probably where that article that I read this morning is coming out. Well, it's difficult to predict the success of PillPack. Now, PillPack, Amazon bought them. Huge. So that's them now. Yep. Um, difficult to predict the success of their efforts to bypass existing RX payment structures. Amazon's goal, detailed in court documents, are a potential negative for yeah, pharmacy man. And what's interesting is the detailing in the court. It was done by CVS saying this is how they're going to cause us harm. Right. By taking this guy, cutting us out of the middle. Right. You know. And I yeah. believe that that that's is you know it's Amazon, J.P. Morgan, and Berkshire Hathaway. Okay. This is this is the group that got together that okay. are going to start with their own companies and then reduce make it a business of reducing drugs uh, for big companies. It, it, would make, it almost yeah. seems like a con the way, the way that they it is. just created a $100 billion middleman to go from the insurers right. to the consumer. Right. Well, yeah. and, and I agree, Amazon has a reach. I mean, if you just dealt oh, yeah. with the prime members alone. And um, 
So you can document show that Amazon helped talks with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I believe Blue Cross Blue Shield, 100 million plus people that they cover. So you just deal with that one person, right. um, one company. Um, pretty wild. Pretty remarkable, seriously, man. Let's go to Robert in Kansas City. Hey, Robert, what's going on? Hey, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Good morning, Robert. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding, man. Appreciate it. You bet. Hey, I had a question about GDX, and it's kind of like a theory question about GDX and gold. So when when the folks on the show are talking about um, gold in particular, they say, okay, well, if it gets up to 1435, it's going to hit a swing point that occurred six years ago. Can you help me to think about, I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around what that means because it seems like, you know, you talk about swing points and things or where buyers and sellers exist, but it seems like what happened six years ago isn't, in my mind, it's not relevant. Because Perfect. Those, those okay, just to break, we'll be in the market. We stay right there, be right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're talking with Robert from Kansas City, and we're going to talk about swings and supply lines. So, Robert, we'll start with the the gold contract. Now, get to the GDX, okay? Okay. So, what happens is that if I bring this gold contract up, what you're going to see is that you know gold topped out in 2011 at 1920, right? 
Then, you know, you went sideways and you come down and you come down pretty heavily. I believe what you're talking about is that, you know, in, what is that, September? No, August. August of uh, 2013, that's 1428, okay? So the way swings work is that the, as you're coming up to a su the supply line happens to be anything over where you're trading. And in this particular case, you can see this supply line is really big here. I mean, the, the supply line, you can start the supply line over the other side. And what the supply line specifically is, is people that have bought over the price that you're at, the equity, or in this case, the commodity, has come on under that price. And there's so many people that are stuck with gold at a higher price. Yeah, just choose like 1400 for easy ballpark, right. right? I mean, if you bought it in 2010, yeah, yeah, you've been underwater. Right, so what t tends to happen, in this particular case, let's say it's 2010, you know, it's nine years later, a couple different things happen, I believe, okay? The first one is that even if you bought it at 1800, you might be selling it at 14, say, okay, because it's not, it's not like it's a year later, I want my 1800, okay? So as you're approaching that supply line, that's where there's more supply unless there's more demand. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And you can see that we went up there twice and failed. You know, if she's move over the... Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. We went up there. First time we went up into that level, we went up there in 2016. It got to 1377. Couldn't handle it. Too much selling. Came up there again for four months in a row. Yeah. I think beginning of 18. And couldn't handle it. Then what we just did is that you can see... And if I do this, if I put this up, it, what you're going to see, the, the buy-in was extraordinary before we broke the swing. And it was laid out pretty well. But you could see that the, they were still selling. See, the first time that we got up there, you know, we got up there on the 5th of June, right? You go to 1348, and then we closed at 1333. I mean, they, you know, so some were sitting there selling, selling, selling. Next time... Same thing. We get to 1362, sell and sell and sell, and we close at 1344. Next one, same thing. We get to 1366, it closed at 1348. Then guess what? The buyers overtook them. Okay? So now let's go to the GDX. So if we take a look at the well, GDX. So you, so, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. So on, on gold, so that next level, like you said, is like 1428. So if they overcome that level, it's like it, it can, has the ability to go a lot higher, right? Yes. My take on it right now is that we're going to all-time highs. The way that we broke, that's what it looks like to me. And what happens is that, you know, I mean, this could take a year, year and a half or something, but this is a decisive break. So if we take this and we bring this down, what you're going to see, this is like Technically, that is one classic, that you broke topside, you broke the trend, you broke topside, you come back and tested the trend. This would be a, this is a Bud Rolfs, like, excellent example. I man. agree, totally. And then you take off, and you take off with monster volume. So, it, you know, yeah, you get over this, and we're only talking short money here, the, the 1428. We're over the bulk of it. You get, but if you get over 1428, this thing, I suspect, is going to be able to get to 1600 pretty easy. So if we look at the GDX now, okay, we put the GDX up, and what you're going to see inside the GDX is the same type of setup. I think that might be a, a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy, too, because so many people rely on that 1428 number, and when it clears it, there's going to be a piling on. That would be correct. So I would say, okay. what you could say, too, is the reason, that's the reason why it's such an important number. Right. As in, you're either going to see, right, where people start selling because they see it as a critical level or there's enough buyers that it trades right. away from that level. But right. that's why it is. Everybody knows it's an important level, right? right? It hasn't traded above there in six years. So when you find out, even though everybody knows it's important, yep. are there now more buyers than sellers if it keeps trading into that area? Exactly. I think that's where you find out. And that's where, so picture it. Let's picture that none of us are even in the marketplace, right? If you've been trading, but you're at, let's say that you are a trader, right? What would happen with right. traders, they're going to take their positions that they can have something at their back. And that's what swing points really do. Like if, you, if you're bullish, you say, I, I love a breakout, man. Sure. It's breaking out, it's going. If you're bearish, it's like, I like selling yeah. because it's, you're either right or wrong very quickly. Sure. So If it gets back into that range, it might just sit under 1,400 for a little while. Exactly. Then, right. Maybe you can get stopped out. Right. So they're, very, they're great places to place 
trades. That's what also happens. And that's, that's what you're, that's why momentum can change at those and places. And like you said, if somebody got in 1800, I mean, Robert, we were just at 1,050 in like 2015. That's almost like 40%, 30% up from there. So right. you can, that's a still a pretty great value if you want to get out of that. Oh, yeah. You know, it could be a time. Yeah. It could be yeah. a time. You know, so the, the, the GDX now, you know, you, you, your challenge in the GDX is going to be this 31 area. You know, the you high can, of 16. Yeah. yeah, you can see we, we right made we low, made yeah. it up to 31 high, yeah. in uh, 2016. 31.79. Yeah, and you know, bottom line, it stopped its tracks because let me bring this back. I had to bring it back a little bit further, actually, because you see the supply line, and that's the, and the GDX. That supply line is extensive, man. It goes all the way back to 2006. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty intense, man. You know, people are holding there. So if you blow by this 31, then it's like game is on in a huge way, man. It's the, pretty remarkable so far from that, though. Well, like we, 30 percent. We are. Yeah. No, no, we are. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt. So what you're saying is gold could co go up, but GDX could stay put because it has a different swing point. No, no, uh, no. If, if gold's going up, the GDX is going to get to 31 very quickly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking my uh, taking time to explain that to me. I appreciate well, it. Well, I appreciate the growling problem with us, man. Have a great Have a one. one. Thanks, Robert. Have a safe one. Take care, man. Yeah, so it's... The whole thing's intriguing, man. You know, yeah, and quite a run, man. I mean, 1920 was the high, made it down to 1,050 just even a few years ago. So, yeah, I mean, even if you bought higher, you know, you're aware, just like we were saying, that this is a critical level. It is. You just, you know, you're feeling a lot better getting 1,400 than you were at 1,050. Right. And that's where you make your decision and you find out. You yeah. know, if the start charges higher, then maybe everyone's not selling. They're saying, you know what? I believe, like you're saying, we might get a little bit more action out of this, and right. I'm going to let it go and, into that ga that trading area. And what's important to understand inside the metal market is gold. The market is so small. It's like, you know, we all can think that, oh, there's so much gold that, you know, so every ounce of gold that's gotten mined forever is still around. But guess what? You can add all that up, and you can add the market caps of all the gold stocks up, and it's tiny sure. compared to, you know, so it doesn't take a lot of buying sure. at all. And now we're talking about... You know, if you go back, if we talk about how, how much money funds have today versus even 20 years ago, oh, my God. Like, it, it's so much more money, you know, and people are looking to put their money somewhere. So, you know. Yeah. It's going to be intriguing watching this. And you, you have to keep just keep your eye on the dollar. It's going to be all about this dollar, you know. And there's, you know, if this dollar bottom line gets into this 94, and it continues with volume, then you got some. You see, like, what's, what's happening right now, when we started, this looks like the volume's going to dry up again on the dollar with 14,000. I think we started with 13. So okay. this is, you know, we might have the same phenomenon, man. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're in a CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 25. NASDAQ is down 9. S&Ps, <coughs> excuse me, folks, are down 3. Let's just look at this volume for a second because you're going to have triple witching out here today. So volume should come in. Yeah, volume's got to come in because look at that volume right now. You actually got volume already. 385 million yeah. is a lot. And so that's... Um, it's coming. That was that at the, that well, was right at the open, exactly. Oh, and it's, it's all really at the close, most yeah. to trigger on the... the, the the options and you're gonna get both, futures. Exactly. I think it's futures. It's futures too, right? Yeah. What happens yeah. is that the the cash S and P closes on the open. Okay. And then the rest of them close I mean, close on the close. Sure. But you can see, look at that. Uh, the Nasdaq has already done uh, 596 million. So there's going to be some action out here today. We'll see whether. Um, you know, you stay sideways. My, my take is that this still wants, it hasn't finished its ABC structure on the way up yet. The spies, no other, the Qs. So. How about oil? Can we take a look? What yes. is the contract? So CL. Let's see. Oh, let's see. July. Active contract. Yeah, let's see where it brings us. Going to bring us to July? No, August. There That's it is. There okay, so now we're in the queue. Not that, not a lot of. Um, no, especially, I don't know if everyone heard it, the stories out this morning, right? right. That there was a potential strike for. <coughs> uh, retaliation in terms of the drone getting oh and the right president trump pulled it back within like mere minutes and right you know um nonetheless there could be some escalation no. um just pretty muted response when you think of the implications of back and forth oh, missile yeah. strikes with iran and oil is up 50 cents i mean yesterday that was it getting priced in to some degree, it was. right? Three bucks, yeah. up three dollars, so two dollars and ninety-eight cents. But yesterday. still, we're just back to where we were at the end of May. Um, right. So. Right. And this is, you know, so we were just talking about supply line. Now, this is a big supply line right here, uh, you know, and what that would be is that that's when oil went from sixty-one to fifty-seven too. So, you know, you, you got to build some cars here to get through this, you know, and Maybe of this, course. Sorry, go ahead. Well, just what happens is that politically, this is where you don't want to be shot oil. <laughs> I would agree, you know, because you, the risk-reward side yeah, of things doesn't is make that, any sense, you right? know, we're not going to get some news that everyone's going to say, oh, surprise, surprise, there'll never be war, because that's just right. not going to happen. Right. So the only potential is that there's a tit and tat back, exactly. back and forth, and exactly. that, that could escalate. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, a real, a real, yeah. The implications of... No, because the story out there was that they had said that there might be 150 people that would be killed, and if you start getting that type of back and forth, then yes, I imagine that market will react. And look at so the market. Uh, it's intriguing here, folks. Uh, you know this this market is going to basically be flat, push higher. Uh, it's getting it's getting a bid right now. Let's go look at those NQs. So sure NQ is. You shot up like 40 you, points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're solid 60 points off the low, actually. Look, the low. look at that thing, man. 
Yeah, yeah so that low, and low. Even overnight, I guess they're calling the low, but okay. that low, what That's is that low at? 77.33, yeah, yeah, 55 points. Right. Whew. And now what you just did here, now this is pretty cool because... Back to the swing point yeah, lesson. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just launching totally. that swing, and it's like, totally. okay, you made it by the swing, and that's why what you want to do, too, and this is what I've learned, is that when you're taking swings out, if you take them out with conviction, meaning it's the wide price spread accelerated volume, your probability is much higher that you're going to continue that way when you don't when it's like the fight is there and you don't have the like acceleration it's just common sense almost, because it gets right? tired yeah it's it just gets common tired sense it charges right past exactly. it of course you yeah. might have a better shot at continuing right. yeah you know, definitely so, um, how about bitcoin can we pull it up again and see where xbt because uh, it's uh continuing in terms of 256 um, yeah so we haven't quite hit the high of the day, 99.22. I, I bet Paul's had a nice run. Paul and Anderson, he's, yeah. he's been too busy to call in. It's just yeah. been charging. I Printing mean, money somewhere. I mean, even look at where we were. It's it's amazing when you think um, June 10th, we're 11 days from there, and you were at 7,500, and you're up 33% um, almost when in 11 days. I guess they're all trading days in Bitcoin world, right? As opposed to... I know. Yeah, <laughs> they I really know. are. The weekends, they almost call the weekend trading days. Versus, it, that's, it, it's, it, when you get this type of momentum, it seems that on the weekends, they really, you know, can really push yeah. it, man. I mean, even a week ago, we were sitting at 81.80. That was yeah. the low on Friday. And no, so look at that. That's the gap over the weekend. Yeah, right. Yeah. And what you're seeing here, so we want, we get a Bloomberg chart here, folks, but guess what? If you had some other kind of chart, you'd be see trading in between that. But And this one here, sure, evidently, yes. they yeah. just don't have it. Yeah, because yeah. 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 this is, uh, is that the future, right? The actual technically future, so it's just like the future closes over the weekend for the S&P future. I, I Can you pull up the description? Yeah, do I don't go? know what they base that on, whether it's a cash. Let's see. Oh, well, they already start, so what, uh, let's see. Let's see if they say what they... No, they just call it Bitcoin. We can look yeah. it up. Yeah. So, there's, there's lots of meanings to the the price of Bitcoin these days in terms of oh, there is. what index are you trading on? What what? You know, it's interesting. Last night, uh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> so look at this. Last night you had Goldman taking a, a run at the retail banks. Now, okay. this isn't Goldman's best interest because what <laughs> Goldman did is that they bought that they bought one of these. Uh, uh, who would you call it? A uh, financial, like, really internet type of company. Fintech, so with the, financial. Yeah, sector. thank you. Yeah. yeah. So with this guy saying, okay, traditional consumer banks face an extra ex existential ex threat from new digital challenges, according to Goldman Sachs executive and the company's retail unit, Marcus. Well, when you see this, okay, yeah. there, there are two types of investment banks: banks that are screwed, and there are banks that don't know they're screwed. Right. Said entrepreneur Adam Dull, founder. Of personal finance app Clarity Money that was acquired by Goldman. Sure, <laughs> you know so yeah, um, they have a financial tech company. Yeah, and they're saying financial tech companies are going to do well in the future. That's surprise, right. Surprise, surprise, right? Exactly. But I tend to agree with. Them. Oh no, I, I do too. You know why? So yeah. this is what he gets into here, right? What he gets into, folks, is that the amount of gold, uh, Goldman's in a unique position to force the industry to be more accountable to the consumer, not to fleece the consumer out of 200 fees per year for yeah. which they are receiving little value. Yeah. That's the, it's going to be the fee structure yes. that, you know, people, you know, well, what ends up happening is that, let's say that, you know, you, I don't know, you're 15, 16, you open your first bank account. Sure. You probably would be open it on one of these fintech companies. You would because yeah. you don't have the ability, right? I mean, right. if you want a free account at uh, Wells Fargo, you right. need you need a direct deposit for this amount. Yep. You need to pay this many right. bills a month. You need that, you know that those exactly. set of criteria, right. which a lot of people don't have to avoid the fees. So then, what has to happen? Well, you have to pay the fees if you want it. Right. And then guess right. what? Now you don't have to pay the fees. You it, can go set up an account. Yep. Um, and I bet this is an industry that's making a lot of headway in terms oh. of it's it's getting better and better and better in terms of the options that yes. you have you know open right. account it's free you can pay your bills you can do whatever you want um and once they get that client folks that that's i mean yeah it, people don't change banks a lot it's you know? difficult right yeah. um and so. you know they can really keep their fees down by just having this online environment totally. huge economies of scale you don't need this physical presence of no. banks no. um you don't even probably need atms in in a in a variety of ways that they're doing things yeah um that's might be a wallet, right? That's the that's, same. Yeah, that's, your yeah. Phone's your, your phone wallet. is your wallet, right? right. Yeah, it's pretty intense, yeah. no doubt. 877-927-6648. This is going from green to red, folks. It Dow is. Industrial's up 52, NASDAQ up 1, S&P's a flat. Tommy and I come right back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 60, Nasdaq's up 2, S&P's a flat. And, folks, uh, if you haven't uh, checked out the gold report yet, great time to do it. I mean, we, we got a run out here. There's do we no have doubt. action going on in the we, gold market right now? We do. Is there action over there? There's no doubt. Uh, so right under newsletters, of course, you click newsletters, gold report right there. New subscribers, 30-day money-back guarantee. Check it out. New issues always published Monday. You'll get access to the archives instantly when you get in there. And new subscribers, you can sign up, 85 bucks for a month. Three ninety five for six, six ninety five for the year. All of those come with a thirty day money back guarantee. So I say I suggest people when you give it a try, go for the six month, go for the year. You can still cancel it, and if you're unhappy, you can get a refund. And uh, I think they'll um, be happy if this action continues, man. It is, yeah, it's it's so. This is the first run since twenty sixteen. It's remarkable that we're yeah. at the highest from back. 2013. Oh, no. I, right. I mean, it, you know, it, just that it's been that long it, that we've been trading at these levels. That's it's right. It's just crazy to say. Right. Um, and that's the cool thing there, folks, is that that is the the longer that consolidation, when you can get out of it. Sure. That's when you really get action because that's been the building of cause for that particularly long yeah. period of time. And then when you look at that, we have we were trading at the same level nine years ago, 2010. I know. We're starting that charge. That's, so let me tell you, it's, yeah. it's going to be wild watching this thing shake out. And it's. It's going to come right back to the dollar again, you know, and it's it's not the end of the world for the dollar going down to, you know, 94, 98, I mean, 90, whatever yep. that, you know, number is going to be. Um, because we've been laying 
at the same place. And the, the cool thing, what gold did do this time, you know, it, it backed down. There's no doubt about that. But it did not back down as much as it could have backed down. Sure. You know, that's, sure. that's, and that's an indication that, guess what, they, people are still buying. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks in uh, TD Ameritrade coming up next. And we got Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Go get him, folks.